Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm sharing the vlog of my very first trip to New York and actually America itself. But before we get into the vlog today, two things. First thing, there'll be a link in the description for the open letter of solidarity for the HarperCollins Publishing Union who are currently and actively on strike. I'm so proud and happy to see this happen as hopefully this can start a road towards better pay and working conditions for people within the industry. Whilst I can't be there striking myself, I can do my part and recommend all of you to sign it. Second thing, we reached 100k. I'll have more to say in a longer post of some kind, but I am just so appreciative of every single one of you in this community that we have. Your support has truly changed my life, and I really didn't expect me, a queer black content creator, to actually even get to this point. But now that I have, I'm ready to get even bigger and even better. There has been a lack of content on here recently, but know that in 2023, I am ready to innovate and annihilate. And so, without further ado, we have arrived in New York. I saw that um, Anne Rice got like a leather bound edition. I think it's a binder book, Interview with the Vampire, the Vampire Lestat, and Queen of the Damned. I think it's a US one. Oh, wow. Okay, no, this does actually sound really cool. Thank you. 
something like that. Why do they remind me of Bayonetta's pistols? Arthur, we have no grails for you. I would love a chalice like this though. Me too.
Hello. Did you get a bag? <laughs> I did get a bag. Hard play. Use the arrows to find the five differences between the two pictures before time runs out. We did it. Question. True or false? Ned Stark is the first character false. in the series. How did you even find this? Wow. Something. Good job. Oh my god. What? Ah. <laughs> 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 like, I'm actually sad. I don't just want to be here, but I'm like, hmm. You have to come back soon. I yes. I mean, I know I'm definitely going about the journals and lunch, so. That's still too far. This is July. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to get a mug from New York as well because it looks pretty good and you know memories and stuff and plus it means I have something to drink out of that is in theme with this video so hello everyone hopefully you've got your beverage of choice because I do have a little bit of a book haul to do and I'm also wearing a Met t-shirt that I got from the Met which was very nice I definitely think that New York gives so much and there are so many amazing places to visit and go to and there's always something interesting and there's always like a story on every corner it's kind of like a similar vibe that I get with London where I feel like there's always something there to do and you can always find an adventure and I really like that but it definitely means I do need to go back to New York at some point because there were definitely a lot of bookstores that I didn't visit. I know a lot of you were sending me like independent bookstores as well, which I very much appreciated. And maybe I can do another like book shopping vlog then as well. But I managed to get about 11 books whilst I was out in New York because I was like, I'm going to American bookstores, which means I need to like focus on getting some really good copies of American books from Barnes and Noble. Also the Starbucks, the Starbucks cup sizes. I wish we had those cup sizes in the UK. Oh, I should also probably address the elephant in the room given the fact that they are my new bookshelves. I think it's like a recurring theme on this channel that I will record a video every like room change in front of empty shelves. I think just from this, this is like a little sneak peek. I think the next kind of look for Fictional Fates is gonna be very exciting. The, the video is coming. So the very first book that I got was actually a gift from my friend Cersei. My friends and I, we do this thing where like, if there's like a book from Water stones that they really want, I will buy it for them and I'll ship it to them. And then in return, they'll then buy me a book from the US and ship it to me. So I got a copy of No Than a Ninth. This one is a signed Barnes and Noble edition. I basically have the US editions of the first and second book. And so I definitely needed to get a matching third book. And now that I have that, I'm really happy because my Forbidden Planet order got canceled. It was supposed to have like black sprayed edges, but then they emailed me like a week ago being like, uh, sorry, this isn't actually gonna happen anymore. 
I still have a copy regardless. Plus, I have the amazing Illumicre versions of the Lock Tomb series as well, so I feel like I'm kind of settled in a way. But I'm really excited to read the Lock Tomb series. I don't really know much about the, this series apart from the fact like lesbian necromancers, and I feel like it's more to it than that. A lot of people explain kind of like the mindfuckery of this plot, so I'm really excited to see how that plays out. I think I'm going to try and read the, the three books in early December. I probably will vlog it because I feel like it's going to be an experience experience a lot of you will probably want to see me cope with, so I feel like that's going to be pretty cool. The next book that I then picked up was one that I was one of my most anticipated reads for this year, and I'm really excited that I can end the year off with reading this book, and that is Strike the Zither by Joan Hurt. This is more so like a reimagining of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It follows a strategist of a warlordess who basically has to like go into an enemy camp in order to save the warlordess's followers from being slaughtered. However, Zephyr, I believe her name is, meets Crow, who basically is kind of like her match in terms of like stratagems and stuff. There is something between like this kind of dynamic that conflict evolves. And I'm really excited about it because I feel like it's going to be something quite awesome and something amazing. I haven't read Romance of the Three Kingdoms, but I know it's kind of one of China's foremost works of literature and it's definitely something I do want to read at some point. Although I think I probably will read like the abridged version as opposed to the unabridged. We have like a red nakedness and then there's like a gold foiling on the Strike the Zither and Joan Hurt. And I just think the title is also very striking. And I just think like the cover is also pretty gorgeous. It was done by Curry Huang. I just think that Curry Huang's covers are just always so beautiful and so delightful. I should also mention Nona's cover art is done by Tommy Arnold and on the nakedness there is a like purple locked rock <laughs> I'm assuming on the nakedness a blackboard and there's like a purple like foiling to the title. We then get into the next book. So we have The Sun Bearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition but it actually suffered a bit of an injury during transition. It. So there is a tear in the dust jacket, which is really unfortunate. This also affected the board of the like hardback, unfortunately. So it is a little bit damaged, but it means when I read it, it's going to be well loved. So yeah, we have a skull on this like blue, like teal nakedness. And it's like a gold, it's like a brassy gold on the like detailing. I adored Cemetery Boys. So I'm really excited to delve into another one of his books. And this one is kind of like a Percy Jackson meets the Hunger Games where like demigods basically go up against one another. The winner is titled like the Sun Bearer and is like heralded and, am and amazing. And then the loser gets sacrificed. So I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. All of the character art by Mars that Aiden has shared has been sublime and amazing. And so I'm really excited to see how all of that ties into the plot. I'm also really this book for a book club that I'm doing with Toppings in Bath and so I'm really excited to be discussing that with them later this month so we shall see how I feel about it later. The next book that I then got was actually a bit of manga because I've been wanting to delve into more series of manga and I really wanted like a kind of like witchy one and so my friend Asia recommended me Witch Hat Atelier. I think my little sister really likes Witch Hat Atelier and reading like the synopsis it's done in like a poetry style which I really enjoy. I'm just really in love with the art style as well that's already been displayed and so I'm I'm excited to delve in. I'm excited to see what it's gonna offer. I definitely do want to try and read a lot more manga going into 2023. I do want to do a dedicated video on like manga graphic novels and webtoons although I feel like I could probably split that into two separate videos. So yeah that's a little watch how to tell you. The next book that I then got was a signed copy of I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McKinney. This one I've already talked about on this channel. It's been quite a hot topic recently in like a lot of writing spaces where they've been discussing like Jeanette McKinney's memoir, the way that she interacts with her mother throughout the text. And I don't know, there's like a lot of like people who more so focus on like Jeanette McCurdy's relationship with like Miranda Cosgrove and Ariana Grande when the book is literally I'm glad my mom died. And so I'm excited to read this and kind of draw emphasis towards her own mother in my review and like see the relationship that she had with her mother. And I think it would just be fairly interesting to see how this book probably could kickstart something longer and more full term. I mean, literally Alison Stoner the other day on Twitter I saw that that was making a tweet about doing like some kind of like research project about child stars and the things that they experience in their young life. And I think it'd be fairly interesting to see that come to light. But for now, I'm intrigued to read I'm Glad My Mom Died. I've also got the audiobook, so I'm gonna be reading them in tandem and seeing how that plays out. Then the next book that I then got was No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. I don't know what drew me specifically to this book. I think it was because, oh no, I remember, right. I will read the specific part of the synopsis. As creatures 
creatures from myth and legend come out from the shadows, seeking safety through visibility, their emergence sets off a chain of seemingly unrelated events. Members of a local werewolf pack are threatened into silence, a professor follows a missing French trail of breadcrumbs to a mysterious secret society, and a young boy with a unique ability seek refuge in a pro-monster organisation with secrets of its own. So monsters are real, but I like the different narratives that are being spun from this one particular like tale. I think it's gonna be fairly interesting to see how that plays out in this book. And there is actually another book that I have right next to me that I'm gonna like swerve into because this also tackles the like threads of dark academia. Well, not, I don't think specifically being dark academia in and of itself, but The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Mowers. This one I picked up because I read the synopsis and I was like, oh, I need this. And then I realized this was like the third or fourth book in a series, but I think each book can stand and alone. So I think it'll be fine if I read this without having to read the rest of them because I looked at the rest of them and I'm not really as interested in them as I am in this one. It was a wild like hour of Google searching that I did. This follows Optimus Yarn Spinner. When I saw the name Optimus Yarn Spinner, immediately I thought of Optimus Prime as like a weaver kind of situation. But anyway, it basically ends up disappearing into Bookholm or the City of Dreaming Books, where basically it contains multiple charming attractions, priceless signed first editions, salivating literary agents, and for hire critics, all of which do sound pretty interesting, but also kind of like scary at the same time. But as the Yarn Spinner begins to explore Bookholm, things begin to emerge that aren't seemingly so great. It's basically like a story taking place in a book based city, which to me sounds fairly interesting. It's kind of like if you sat like a murder mystery in Hei on Wai, which I, I've never been to, but I need to go to. It also has like very stunning like illustrations throughout. And I feel like it's gonna be quite interesting to see the experience of reading this book. Oh, we only have four books left, ooh. The next book that I then got was one that I was really, really, really happy to see when I went into Books of Magic. And this one is, This Is Our Place by Vito Martins. Now, I loved here the whole time. And so when I saw that This Is Our Place was coming out, I was very ecstatic. And then when I saw it in Books of Magic, I was like, I did not realize this book was out. I, I literally immediately picked it up. But on the nakedness, we get this like baby blue nakedness on the board. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but like debossed is This Is Our Place, which I think is very cool. The cover illustration was done by Douglas Lopez and the jacket design was done by Stephanie Yang. I really love the way that this like has turned out. So this basically follows three teens throughout three different decades at number eight Sunflower Street. So basically we have Anna in the year 2000, Greg in the year 2010, and then Beto in the year 2020. And so it basically follows their three kind of experiences living in this house. This kind of premise really reminds me of this like dark comedy series called Why Women Kill. A completely different vibe where you had Lucy Liu, Kirby Hal Baptiste, and Snow from Once Upon a Time. They basically were in like different like years in history, but they were kind of separated by like different decades. It basically goes through why each of them eventually kill their husbands. Although the vibes are very separate, I love those kind of like decade separate narratives taking place in the same setting because then you can also see how the house changes and the house can really become a character in and of itself because it displays a reflection of the character's personality and their taste. And it also reveals a lot more to you than you would initially realize. And so I'm really excited to read This Is Our Place. And I have no doubt that Vito Martins is able to sell another one wonderful, heartfelt, heartwarming story. We then have a little bit of queer reflections on horror with It Came From The Closet. This one I started reading a little bit of when I read like a chapter on exorcisms, which I thought was pretty fun. This basically features 25 contemporary queer and trans writers reflecting on horror films that shaped them and shook them from Hitchcock to Halloween to Hereditary. I had a weird experience this year of realizing that I really like writing horror. Wub Wub has elements of horror in it. My short story that is being published is in a horror anthology and the cover is like right here. My story is weird, but it also very much plays into like vibes of Netflix is you, if you get me. I feel like it's gonna be very interesting to see like the different ways people have interpreted different elements of horror and see how I can then in turn adapt certain things that they say or anything that I find interesting into my own writing and my own experiences of like consuming horror. I feel like it's just interesting to always take other people's perspectives into account because
because when you do that, you inform your own perspective and then you gain a higher perspective. It's a lot of talk about perspectives, but you get me, hopefully. We then come to the last two books, which I basically picked up at the airport as I was leaving because I was like, do I get this? Do I not get this? And I was like, I'm a get this. So the first book that I got was Daisy Jones and the Sex by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is basically the last book that I need for the Taylor Jenkins Reid Read and Ranked video that I wanted to do this year, but probably will end up going out early next year. I was trying to search for the longest time for a hard cover Daisy Jones and the Sex, but let me tell you, it's super hard to find without it being too expensive. And so I was like, I'm just gonna start with a paperback for now. And then eventually when I do find a hardback, I will get that. But also I am basically assuming that someone is going to do like a matching edition set of Daisy Jones and the Six, Evelyn Hugo, Malibu Rising, and Carrie Soto all in like a collector's box set. So I feel like I could just wait for that and then snap that up as a hardback eventually then, because I know someone is probably gonna do that. I don't know who, but someone will. So yeah, that's why I got Daisy Jones and the Six. And I'm really excited to read it because it's one of the ones that everyone keeps recommending me to read when I say I really love Taylor Jenkins Reid. And then the last book that I then got was I'm the Girl by Courtney Summers. I don't even know what it's about, but because Joelle talked about it so much, I was like, I need to check this book out. Plus the nakedness. We have this blue and pink contrast, the pink of the deer horns. There's also the pink on the side, but the color scheme is fairly like uniform. And I really like that. When 16 year old Georgia Avis discovers the dead body of 13 year old Ashley James, she teams up with Ashley's older sister, Nora, to find and bring the killer to justice before he strikes again. And so I'm very excited for that. And apparently it's a spiritual successor to Sadie, which I have. I might do like a Courtney Summers marathon, who knows? But this seems like one that is gonna be pretty cool to read. So yeah, this is essentially all of the books that I got in New York. It was just an unforgettable experience. And I just had so much fun there with my friends and I literally can't wait to go back and see them again. It's one of those things where it's like, I've waited so long to meet Asia, who I've been friends with for literally like seven, eight years now. And then Cersei and Joelle, who I've known for about two years now. And just being able to meet those friends for the first time was like such an amazing experience. And yeah, be sure to add their vicious games and also all these sunken souls on Goodreads. Thank you so much for joining me today on this book shopping vlog. I have had so much fun. Let me know if there's any locations you want me to go to next. Edinburgh, hey and why. I love traveling to different places and exploring their bookshops. So let me know and I can be sure to do that for you. As I head into 2023, let me know if there's any way I can improve these book shopping vlogs because I definitely want to be able to do that. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified whenever I upload next. And if you want to find me on any of the social medias, I'll have them all linked in the description down below for you so you can find me on every single other platform form. I am just really excited to see how all of these bookshops are going to look once they're all up and all the books are on them. And I think it's just going to look so amazing and cool. And so yeah, I guess until the next time. Bye besties.